This 10 year old cinema camera is an absolute beast, featuring a 4K super 35 millimeter sensor, XLR audio inputs, autofocus, and perhaps my favorite, built-in ND filters. Even today, you will have trouble finding a camera that is this capable. So that's why in this video, we're gonna take a look at its features, its image quality, and see how it stacks up against a modern mirrorless camera. Canon C100 was released back in 2012 with a hefty price tag of $8,000. However, today I was able to snag one for just $500. And for that price, I think this is one of the most capable cinema cameras you can get your hands on. So to start off, let's talk about design. Although it does have a strange form factor, it is surprisingly ergonomic to shoot with. And that's because it's designed with a solo shooter in mind. Both the top and side handles provide a solid grip you can shoot with comfortably while having access to all the buttons and settings you need. Speaking of, there are a ton of buttons on the camera just for about any setting you can think of, which means you don't have to spend time digging through menus. Alongside the back, we have a flip out screen. And while it is unfortunate you can't flip it around to see you if you're in front of the camera, it does provide enough flexibility if you happen to be behind the camera. The Canon C100 features the EF mount, which is great because there are so many lens options to choose from. And in the mirrorless age, these older legacy lenses are actually getting much cheaper, which is awesome. And here we can spot this sensor, which is a 4K super 35 millimeter sensor, which is downscaled to 1080p. So while it does shoot 1080p, it does give you a much sharper image. The C100 records internally into the dual SD cards, or you can record externally if you want a little bit higher quality video. Take a look at the top of the camera, we have our lovely top handle, which makes it great for getting those low angle shots. But this also houses our XLR audio inputs, which is great if you don't want to deal with extra audio recorders or adapters. And if you want to adjust any of your audio settings, you can adjust your gain, do phantom power, change channels, everything right there on physical dials. You don't have to go through a menu and change things. And right below those SD cards, we have our battery, which I must say the Canon C100 has remarkable battery life. You could bring one battery and maybe a spare if you really need to, and you can shoot the whole day with just that. It is so refreshing to pick up a camera and just know you can last the whole day. You don't have to bring a bunch of accessories to get it up and running. And the other thing that makes this a joy to shoot with is the built-in ND filters. You can cycle between two, four, and six stops of ND. This is perfect when you are going outside in various locations. It's so easy just to reach down and cycle to the ND. It's absolutely perfect, and I think every video camera should just have them. Now this is an older camera and does have limitations. However, there are a few things that I discovered when shooting with the C100 that really breathes new life into this camera. Starting off with the fact that the Canon C100 absolutely loves light. You definitely don't want to underexpose your footage because when you bring that image back up, you'll see a lot of chroma noise and artifacting and it's not very good. So I recommend to overexpose your footage, but don't clip it and you're able to pull that image back down in post. This gets rid of a lot of noise and different artifacts, and you're left with a really good looking image. Even if you have to raise your ISO and bring it back down, you will get a cleaner image. The C100 has several different picture profiles to choose from. By far, if you want the best image quality, I recommend shooting in Canon Log. This gives you way more information in the highlights and in the shadows. However, the tricky part with this is, this is 8-bit footage. So if you plan to color grade it, you can't push it too far before it starts to break down. Which brings me to my third tip, which is to use Cinematch to convert your Canon log footage into Ari Alexa colors. To convert your Canon log footage into that beautiful Ari Alexa colors, the first thing we're going to do is create a few new nodes. I'm just gonna put a bunch right there. Then we're going to head over into our Cinematch plugin. And I'm gonna drop this right about here. I might do some effects afterwards, but bring them on one of those nodes. And the first thing we're gonna look at is the choose the camera source profile. Here, we're going to select our camera, which are a bunch. You can convert nearly any camera and convert it to a different camera, which is perfect for matching colors. I actually have a full video on Cinematch if you wanna check that out right here. But for this video, let's just go ahead and click Canon. I'm gonna go down to C100, Mark one and Canon log, press apply. Now we choose our target profile, which I'm gonna click here. And again, you can choose various different profiles, but I'm going to choose Ari, log C, bam. So already it, you can see a conversion happening right there if I were to turn this on and off. 
This is converting the log profile, so from Canon log to RE log. And down here, we can actually apply a Rec.709 transform. Underneath the advanced tab, we choose if we only want the color space transform or the sensor match, which you can see there's a clear difference there when I click the sensor match. And this is because Cinematch actually goes to the sensor level when comparing these cameras, which I think is just tremendous. So after you apply the Rec.709 transformation, you can mess with your exposure. So with the exposure, I like to get it into the general ballpark range, so we might raise it up. However, if you want to get a little bit more control of this, you can use the exposure false colors. So we can set this to skin tones and we know where our skin tone should be highlighted in orange. Just toggle that back off and you can see that we do have a pretty good exposure right here. And I can adjust the color temperature based on how warm or cool it is, but I can actually see that we have quite a bit of green in this image and I might just bring up more magentas in those skin tones, toggle it back off, and we already have a pretty good image right out of the gate. But if we want to take this image a bit further, we can go to one of our previous nodes. We can increase the saturation up and maybe just warm up that image a little bit. I'd say we have a great looking image in just a few clicks. And let's say you're happy with all the work you just did. You can actually export out a 3D LUT version of this. So anytime you are shooting Canon Log, you could drag and drop a LUT and it automatically converts all your colors, which is just super sweet. If you want to try Cinematch for yourself in either Final Cut, Premiere, or DaVinci Resolve, then I will leave a link in the description down below. Massive thanks for Cinematch for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. To truly test the image quality out of the C100, I thought I would compare it to a modern mirrorless camera that most people are familiar with, the a7S III. Canon has always been known for great colors. Comparing this to a modern day, much more expensive camera, it's really not fair. However, one thing that I do notice on the C100 is it does kind of look film-like. In terms of dynamic range, we can clearly see that the A7S III wins out. It has much better highlight and shadow information, and you are able to manipulate the A7S III footage much more. Taking a look at autofocus, Canon did offer a service to upgrade to the dual pixel autofocus. For a 10 year old camera, autofocus is pretty much unheard of, and this is surprisingly good. It keeps me in focus, it doesn't drift too much. The biggest limitation of this, however, is the fact that it is center focus only. So you have a small box in the middle of the frame where it actually does its focusing. Comparing this to the a7S III, we can see that it is slower, but do keep in mind that I am shooting with a non-native Sigma 18 to 35. Moving on to low light, modern cameras have definitely made improvements in this area. The C100 does hold up for its age, However, you do see quite a bit of noise when you go above ISO 6400. In a pinch, I could see myself shooting up to 10,000 ISO if I really needed to. For the best image quality possible, I recommend sticking at the native ISO of 850 and try to get as much light into your scene. Shooting with the C100 after all these years really just proves how capable this camera was back in the day and still is. It is such a breath of fresh air to be able to pick up a camera, a battery, throw in a card, and you're ready to shoot. Most cameras today can't really do that. And it's just incredible that this camera fulfills on many things I would want in a dream camera. And I encourage other camera companies to look at the C100 and start implementing these things into their cameras. And while the C100 is showing its age with the limited frame rate and resolution options, I'm still so impressed with how the image holds up 10 years later. So let me know your thoughts on the Canon C100 in the comments down below. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video and I'll catch you guys next time.